Alright, we're in the closet today, no homo, and I have a tri- I have triple trouble for you today. I have three mini boomerants that I'm gonna give you, okay? Mini boomerants, and they're all on the same topic, CSS. Actually, we could call them minified boomerants. <laughs> Hilarious joke for my Redditor friends. Um, so, rant number one. Here's, I'll explain if you're a normie and you don't know what CSS is, I'll tell you what CSS is, okay? But my fir first rant, I'll go ahead and get into it. My first rant is, when people email me, and this is something I, I will never understand, when they email me and ask my permission to use my CSS style sheet, my cascading CSS style sheet, I do not understand that. Now, of course, if, if you don't know what CSS is, it literally, it's basically the color scheme of your website, okay? It's a little file, it has your color scheme, has, you know, what floats where, has like rules for how things are shaped and where their borders are, stuff like that. That's what CSS is, okay? Now, you can go to any website and get their CSS. I cannot understand why anyone would think you need to ask permission to use CSS. I mean, it'd be like if you were asked, if you, if you see someone paint their house in a certain color scheme, you ha as if you go to them and ask their permission for, to use their intellectual property. It's just so absurd to me. I cannot even imagine it. Okay. Like e even, even if you're simping for proprietary software, which I'm not, but even if you are, you might think that, oh, okay, well that's a big program. It makes sense to have IP for that. But for rules about like color schemes, ridiculous. I can't, I can't even understand it. This is actually one thing uh, that annoys me to no end. Like these people who ask you, like you put something out there and they ask for, they ask you to like put some kind of license on it. Like, so they expect that it's like, you'll be offended if you use the script that you, or the CSS that you uploaded. Same thing when I used, when I first put up all of my scripts on GitHub, Okay, my dot files on GitHub. People would absurd. This is just I don't know. Maybe culture shock for me, because like I'm not in this cucked mindset of oh I got a oh intellectual property I gotta follow it. Um, but so many people would just email me and ask, "Wow, I really like this script. Can I like use it, dude?" And I'm just like, "Why? Why do you think I put it on GitHub, buddy?" Okay, so here's actually here's my new license. Okay, it's called I don't know what it's called, but here's how it works. If you ask you can't use it, okay? If you even think you have to ask, you can't use it. Everyone else can use it, okay? But that's the first thing that annoys me that happens in CSS. When people ask you to, can I use your colors thing? No, 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 no. And I've never responded to any, any of those emails because it's just so ridiculous to me, okay? Number two, uh, minified CSS. Cringe! Now, what is minified CSS? Okay, now CSS, usually when you make a, a, a style sheet uh, in CSS, you have formatting, so, you know, you can clearly read everything. It's all, oh, it looks, it looks nice. You can go through it. Your code editor has everything highlighted, stuff like that. Great, okay? Um, now, there's this thing called minification, where what you do is you take your style sheet, and then you run it through a script, and what the script does is deletes all the white space, deletes all the unnecessary semicolons, deletes all the blank blank lines, the new lines, everything. So it's all just one giant jumble that you cannot read. If you go on someone's minified CSS, you will not be able to read it. Now, in a lot of cases, you can get rid of .min and you'll redirect to the original page or something like that. But I cannot stand minified CSS. Now, I understand the purpose of it, okay? The purpose, allegedly, is, oh, well, you know, we want to save bandwidth. Okay, so we're going to get rid of these this white space or something like that. Now, people don't... Re I don't really see people doing that with HTML, but they do it with CSS. Maybe they do do it with HTML. I'm not quite sure. Okay? Um, but here, here is the thing that I find really ironic about this. Okay? What I find ironic is 100% of the sites that I have run into that do minified CSS are all overwhelmingly bloated. That is, oh, wow, we saved... Uh, a couple, maybe even a whole KB on my uh, my minified CSS. Oh, well, now I got to load two megabytes of ads, a megabyte of trackers. We have diffs zooming all over the screen. We have JavaScript running and, like, eating up your CPU. 
Like everything about the site is incredibly bloated and you, the, you know, minifying your CSS, it's just like putting uh, lipstick on a pig. Okay, that's what it is. All right. What a waste of time. A absolute waste of time. People shouldn't be doing it. It's just a hassle. You know, if I want to go into your style sheet, maybe I want to get something from it. Uh, maybe I want to uh, change my own when if I'm using stylus or some add-on where I can modify CSS, I want to be able to clearly see what's going on in your CSS, okay? I can wait the extra microsecond for the, the full version of your CSS, as if, I, I can't even imagine it taking up that much space. And again, it's just, I've, it's the sites that use minified CSS are exactly the ones where it's not gonna do any good, okay? Probably doesn't do much good anyway, but whatever. I'm not against the idea of it, just the fact, I just find it ironic, the sites that use minified CSS. Okay, number three, third uh, minified boomerant, also about CSS. Um, sites about CSS, okay? So if you are, let's say you're do working on your website and you forget how to do something in CSS. Oh, I wanna, oh, I wanna have these divs next to each other unless there's uh, not enough room Then I want them, you know, in a row or something like that. Okay, I gotta figure out how to do that. Now you can't type in man CSS and you know get get uh, an offline manual. There's probably something for that. Someone in the comments is going to say, "Oh, oh, you can just use this, dude." Um, but normally, what people do with pretty much everything else is they search, "How do I do this in CSS in your search engine?" Okay, and you'll run across one of several sites. You will run across a site called, uh, excuse me, what is it? CSS tricks, tips, something like that. You'll run across something that's like W3 school. I, I forget exactly what they are. Who cares? I I find it. And I another thing I find very ironic, all of these sites dedicated to CSS, web development, what do they all have in common? They're the worst sites developed on the internet. They are by far the slowest to load, the most difficult to use. I mean, CSS trips or tip, tips, whatever it is, you go on the site, the layout is very simple. It just has a sidebar, has a, has a front bar or something. Why is it the slowest site on the internet? Okay? I, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I... And this actually, I think, happens a lot. Okay? What happens with people who use... Who know how to do all this cool stuff in CSS, they think that because they can, they should. Okay? So they write all this junk. Like, people out there... There are people out there who have megabytes of CSS. Okay? Maybe that's why they minify it. Okay, I can't imagine. I can't imagine having that much CSS, especially. I mean, if you if you have CSS that big, just like you use different sheets for different parts of your website. Okay, clearly not all of that is being used on one page, right? Um, I'm just like so. I I just find it very ironic that the literally worst design sites on the internet are exactly those on web design, and that actually is a recurring theme. I just want people to 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 notice this. Uh, these people, these odious people called web devs, all right. Uh, you know, I, I remember uh, uh, Nassim Taleb. Okay, he talks about uh, how modern architects. The the problem with them is they build stuff to please other modern architects. It's just like this incestuous community where they're constantly like, uh, they're basically just uh, like stroking their own egos. Okay, and everyone else is like, wow, this stuff looks disgusting. Why wow, modern architecture is terrible exactly the same stuff with modern web development because these people do things because they can because they think they're fun oh look at the nerdy things i'm doing and you get these massive websites that can't even like please if your website functions better if it's just plain text it should be a plain text website frankly okay that's that's how it should be okay and actually right now uh I, I, it isn't live yet but i've actually been rewriting my own website because i think it's too big okay in fact i'm getting rid of a a common css style sheet cascading css sorry css sty stands for cascading style sheet so if you say css style sheet which i always, everyone always always says technically it's redundant but who cares some redditors in the comment will uh, comment section will say something about it but who cares about them uh what was i saying uh, so I, I've been thinking about rewriting, uh, well, I've not been thinking about it, I've been doing it. Uh, it's not live yet, but I've been rewriting my entire website without a style sheet whatsoever. Okay, normally you have a style sheet in common with all your pages. Here's what I'm doing, I'm, I'm rewriting everything in bare HTML, 
and then a little style tag where I have maybe one or two rules, okay? Because frankly, my view is the inter you know, the internet, it should be viewed in plain text and you should not style it that much and keep it simple. Like when I look at the sites that I've actually gotten a lot from where there's good content, where you read good content, they all have simple layouts. Like, I'm sorry, this having diffs zoom across the your field of view is not going to make your life any better, okay? It, people are going to get distracted. Maybe they'll click on other stuff, but, like, if you want quality viewers, I want quality viewer, viewers. That's what I want. You know, sometimes I think I have too many subscribers on YouTube. Maybe I should minify my subscribers, too. Get a, get a, a smaller chunk of, of the high-quality people. But when you're looking for quality viewers, text just... Readable text is the ultimate way to get through to them. You can have a little bit of styling, but if you're going over, if you're having, you know, megabytes, if you have to minify your style sheet, you're probably doing something wrong. And that's why I've been switching over just, just as a ridiculous, um, crazy thing that I do. I've, I've been making a website without a style sheet where, uh, and guess the great thing about that is I don't, I'm not tempted to do fancy stuff and fancy drop down menus that I don't need. Uh, instead, basically every page, uh, I'll ch maybe I'll change the background. Uh, maybe I'll add a little buffering on the bottom so you can scroll down a little bit. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make the footer a little bigger if I, I want to put links in it. But aside from that, that's really all you need. Like, and the focus is on the content of the website. And that's something you don't really see that much anymore, frankly. Uh, so those are my minified uh, boomerants on CSS. I'm right. Uh, yeah.